yesterday's coffee it's only about half an inch left now I don't think I could say that I opened a can of worms with what I was saying about the Pontos add-on kits in previous episodes um, I, I think that what I do want right now is for you to fully understand <clears throat> that I do believe the those add-on kits have their place uh, and in that let, let's say I could turn the clock back to when I was in my late 20s or early 30s when I was you know doing the Lusitanian Titanic and the and the 35th scale uh, army tanks and all that kind of stuff uh, if I could turn the clock back to that time <clears throat> uh, the the add-on kits might have been the thing for me because back then I was going to live forever and one of the other viewers who is doing uh, th this same ship he's almost the exact same age as me and he was indicating that you know he he didn't at this stage in his life he didn't want to be taking on something that is going to maybe take on a whole lot of time no he didn't he didn't use those words but that's what he was thinking because I'm thinking the same thing I I don't want to be taking on something that is going to be uh, very time-consuming the the law uh, here here's another way of looking at it the the Pontos add-on kits uh, okay the law of diminishing returns really applies as far as I'm concerned yes you will end up with something that's going to be a whole lot better uh, well not a whole lot better some better it'll be better and it'll be more interesting and if you like if you like uh, you know fiddling around with teensy weensy little parts that you have to use uh, a microscope in fact just the other day I was thinking you know I could uh, my shop microscope which is uh, just just back over there I probably would make some sort of a, a boom affair so that I could I could reach out I could grab it I could pull it and have it just where I wanted it would have counterweights and all the rest of it you know I, I I can make stuff like that in fact I've got I've got the steel downstairs in my workshop I could I could make it all all out of steel and it would be quite quite good and uh, and I started thinking about it and yeah that'd be kind of fun and then I realized no it's not a good idea at this stage in my life I'd spend maybe a month doing that and uh, and for what you know and then I and then it's too late now uh, for the hood to to uh, get the add-on kit because uh, you know uh, as you saw uh, uh, Scott and the uh, from Aussie Trekkie well he was nipping off all his little uh, his little parts here well these these all have to come off and you have to get your deck smoothed right out like you what you I don't know those of you who who watch his show you notice maybe he he went around with a little grinder and he ground everything smooth there's a tremendous amount of preparation to that you have to do before you can start assembling and putting down your microscopic uh photo etch uh anyway I I do believe that uh, trumpeter has included in their kits enough photo etch to make the kit look really impressive um, another another thing while I'm thinking of it uh, these kits the way they are right now for the for the wooden decking they're not the way I the way I look at it is they're not really designed to have the wooden decking put on because the gunnel the gunnel should raise up about another millimeter so that when you put the wooden decking down the edge of the wooden decking isn't seen and I've, I've alluded to this before that that I th that to me the wooden decking it looks like something that's been stuck on no matter how good it's done and I've seen some pre pretty good ones oh uh, one of the viewers I forget his name now he, he was mentioning that that he had done the Rodney the same Rodney that we're probably going to be doing in about a year and a half or so and he had just completed it I think he said it took him 19 months 
and uh, and he had uh, used the wooden decking and so on. And he said uh, it looked really really good. So right away, I, my uh, uh, you know I thought to myself, okay, let's let's check. Maybe he put it on his channel. And I checked. This channel has no content. It would be so nice if some of these people that have done a really nice job on something, you know, if they could just video it and and just even if it's just a, a short little thing where they did sort of a walk around, you know. Uh, if you don't know how to do that sort of thing, uh, ask somebody or, or go on YouTube and say, how would you put a video on YouTube? Now, I did not check, but I don't need to check because I'm sure that YouTube is loaded with videos about how to put a video on YouTube. And it's not that hard. I mean, if I can do it, anybody can do it. <laughs> Just because I've been in photography since I was a teenager doesn't mean that I... I'm into video videography. I just learned all of this <clears throat> just in the last few years, the videography part of it. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm starting to ramble here. So if 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 uh, if some somebody like Trumpeter came out with two versions uh, of their kit, one that somebody was going to do the wooden decking, and one that somebody that wasn't, and you know I, I think that's a good idea, but maybe not. There's probably good reasons why they don't do that. You know, if I was smart, I'd be rich, right? <laughs> anyway, back to the Ponto Sadon kit. I don't want to be people to think that I can't appreciate the the uh, the fact that it will make your model look better, at least when you get looking at it really close. Uh, I mentioned to one of the viewers in a comment this morning that, uh, like on the Bismarck, you remember the when we did the radar. And we, we assembled that out of uh, photo etch. That looked really, really good. Especially being as I didn't try to paint it with a brush. <laughs> yeah, you got to paint that photo etch stuff with an airbrush. There is that about it. Because if you try to use a brush, you're just going to clog up all the little tiny, I was going to say pores. <laughs> I mean, that stuff is so small, it's almost as pores. Uh, anyway, I, um, if you have the time, and if you're not if you're not videoing it, it'll <laughs> you'll have the time. And uh, well, sure, then, then buy a kit like this, and then spend the extra th three four hundred dollars and get the add-on kit. I think the add-on kit is about as expensive as the kit. I, I haven't priced it recently, but anyway, uh, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not trying to say that uh, it's no good. It it probably it's no good for me. But it might be good for you. Anyway, uh, today I want to do something a little different. I think I'd like to make these little parts here in step number five. Okay. Now I was going to just try and find all our little parts here that we need, and there isn't many. I think there's only about four different pieces we need. Uh, however, I think it might be a real good idea if we were to get our hull back into the dry dock. Okay, very carefully now. I suppose there is another way I could have done this. It's lined up pretty good and very gently. That's not gently. No damage. Okay, there we go. Alright, now we'll find our little parts. Okay, it says make two. Uh, so you see two, but what it means is it makes two of these and two of these. They're not the same. So in other words, photo etch D45 is a little bit different from D44, even though they kind of look the same. Obviously one of these spools I guess there was a hose or something rolled up on it. 
uh, is bigger than the other. Um, yeah, and I guess the time to paint those is uh, paint them separately before we put them together because uh, now they are going to be. Let me reposition the camera here if, to know what color to paint them. We have to know where are they going. So let me reposition a bit here. Now these pieces of superstructure that we're looking at right here get mounted down on the deck and they are going to be underneath that part that we were working with yesterday. And these pieces here get mounted on the sides. Uh, I can well imagine that they may never be seen except when you're looking in from from the side. If you remember the the side this deck is opened on the side and uh, yeah you will you will see them. So that means that and it might be a good idea to be painting this this uh, this uh, superstructure wall or bulkhead rather a, a really light gray instead of the dark gray and that way it can be seen because it's going to be sort of hidden and if, if the deck is going to be light then these could be dark so that they will contrast there is no way that a person is going to be able to see the detail of these things but you might if you look in through the the openings on the sides see them there although most people will be looking at it from more or less from the top not from the sides uh, however, let's let's do the best we can. I'm reminded of when I did the Titanic 40 years ago. With, there was the grand staircase, and I thought, oh, that's going to really look nice. It was all covered up. You couldn't see it. Uh, yeah, that was too bad. Anyway, <laughs> funny. Just came to mind here from 40 years ago. Amazing how the memory works, isn't it? Good thing mine's still working. Anyway, let's, let's find these parts. Okay, we have two E sprues. And we need 51, which is this one, and 53, which is this one. And we need the same ones off of each one. Now, I, I was going to use my uh, heavy-duty nippers. Remember, we ground those down about a year and a half ago. And uh, the, the thing of it is that when you nip, the idea what I was thinking of is I would... Uh, let's see, we need 51. So, so when you nip it off, not only does it cut, but it spreads this apart like this. And I was thinking that it could be that I'm going to end up, because it's going to spread it apart so much, I might, instead of being able to cut this off later, like right now, we'll get it like this, just, just enough here. Okay. Now we didn't damage anything. Now we'll do the other one. Okay. Now we need 53. There's 53. Now if I think about it, I use my good to me and nippers as little as possible except for, you know, trimming. Okay, now I'll get the other screw and do exactly the same thing. Now these are the pieces of superstructure that I was talking about a minute ago. And uh, I think we may as well just get them off of the sprue. And we'll trim it down properly in a minute. I'll show you what I mean. If you if you watch closely, maybe you'll be able to see that when you squeeze it together, it spreads. Okay. It has to. It has to spread, otherwise the uh, cutters can't come together. Okay, there we go. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and trim these up off camera. Actually, I'll do one with, with my nippers here because I'll show you how we can get in nice and close here. At least how I do it. I, I know I did this about a year ago, but it could be that somebody didn't see it. And this is just my own idea. There are 
probably a better way of doing this, but anyway, uh, just let me readjust the camera. Okay, once again, this is the way I do it. And what I do is I try to get the edge of my nipper right down so that it is it is flat on, on this part right here, okay? As far down as it'll go. And it's not tilted this way or, or the other way. It's, it's about as flat on the edge as it can go. Then I will bring in the cutters on both sides and I will slowly rotate while pressing down. And when I turn it like this, it should nip in now so that there will be very little Okay, there's going to be very little uh, sanding involved there, and if you're careful, um, the idea of of twisting it is so that the, the so that the cut here I'll move this one in place here, so that the cut is sort of coming in from the from the side, and it's not squeezing it together and scrunching up the plastic, and then you're going to have a, a damaged. I'll do I'll do one more. Okay, now you know Murphy's Law. Murphy's Law says if anything can go wrong, it will. And if the camera is on record, it definitely will go wrong. So. Oh, I think that's okay. I'm going to take very little sanding now to get that little tiny proud amount of plastic that's I can almost do with my fingernail is so little. Okay, you know how I like to beat things to death. Okay, now here's what happens if we do not turn the cutters sideways. As you let's say I didn't do it turn the cutter sideways. As I'm squeezing it together, the last little bit that you're going to be cutting, just the, just the last little bit there is not going to cut. It's going to pull apart because you can see what's happening. The the uh, the cutters are sort of wedge shaped, and they're they're pulling this piece from this piece. So so naturally, there's you can end up with a little a little divot where where the piece pulls apart. Uh, I know from experience that happens. I'm not going to demonstrate to show you, and uh, yeah. Just try it one more time here. Probably the camera perspective, you're not going to see it too good. Now, I can't see it as good as you can, but there should not be a little divot along this edge here. Well, I can see it, but I can't feel it. Okay, now we've got everything filed down there, and the uh, bottom of that edge is going to be mounting properly on the on the deck. You can't see where those uh, sprue connections were at all, can you? Now these little pieces here, even though they are probably never going to be seen by anybody because of their location inside the superstructure, um, I want to do my reasonable best here. Just uh, try and get a hold of one and Ok, 
Okay, now, as you can well imagine, we don't want to be nipping off of that little thing that the, uh, is going to, where the spool is going to attach, so. Okay, we got that one. Let's turn it over. Now, I'm not going to do the other three on camera because it's too easy to screw up here. Okay. That didn't go too well, did it? That did not go too well. But at least that little little shaft thing right there is it's still on there so I think we'll be able to get it in okay I'm going to uh, put on my magnification hood and hold it up close to my face so I can see what I'm doing here okay this is the way I should have been doing it Okay, and don't anybody dare comment and say, Ron, you had wax in your ears. Okay. I didn't, did I? Now I do believe that we did get the worst of it. Okay, it was one of these two smaller ones that I did the boo-boo on. I think it was this one here. Whoops. Kind of hard to tell. Anyway, my thinking was, you can see, you can see that there's still quite a bit of flashing on here. But if I, I was afraid that if I tried to file that off or sand it off, I'd end up losing the, uh, the hose or whatever that is. It's supposed to be rolled up on there. Um, keep rolling away on me, don't they? Well, I have to keep poking at it. That's why. Okay. Um, well. What I can do is when, when it goes on the bracket, I can always uh, rotate it so that the best side is out. But like I keep saying, nobody's going to see it anyway. Okay, we need Photo Etch D 44 and 45. There's 44 and there's 45. I'll uh, move in a little bit and I want to show you something. Now you'll notice right here, number 43. Okay, both of these are 43. Only this one is 44, only this one is 45. And it would be really easy to make a mistake if you were to not constantly be watching the numbers that are adjacent to the part you need. Because I can't tell the difference between 43 and 44. There's probably a very, very slight difference. Um, yeah, hey, I could show up my micrometer, right? No, why bother? Anyway, um, yeah, so we need uh, 44 and 45 off of uh, both D sheets. Now, we have not done this for a while, have we? You know what, I just realized that I did not take the plastic sheet off of this side. Okay, well, I guess I better redo, I better do that and, uh, yeah, get that plastic off of one side. <clears throat> I find it's good, it's a good idea to leave it on, on one side and take it off the other. Or maybe you could take it off the other and leave it on one side. Okay, the plastic sheet is off this side. Now, we were trying to do this. Okay, that one we got already. Now, once you 
once again sorry if I'm going to get the handle of the cutter in your vision here okay we got that one I try to go as close to the part as I can without shaving the edge off of it. And here we go with sheet number two. Now, do you remember earlier I was saying how easy it was to maybe accidentally take off the wrong piece? unless you were watching the numbers? Well, apparently I wasn't watching the numbers. And I wasn't watching the monitor either, or I would have seen something was going wrong here. Yeah, I was removing the wrong piece. Well, we are able to fix it up later, as you will see. But I can't believe I did that. You know what I just did? I cut the wrong one. I cut 43. Okay. Here we go, 44. Yeah, I have made a stupid mistake here. Okay, clearly this was number 45. It's the, it's the narrow one. So we got a couple of those. Okay, those are both 45s. But these ones that look alike, okay, one of them is a 43. Okay, let's uh, go like this now. Okay, that should be easy to figure out. Yeah, if we lay this right on top of there, we can see that the holes line up okay. So this one here is 43. So I'll have to put that in a little tiny see-through envelope and save it for when we need it. Or, or hey, no, why, why not just, here, I'm not using my head. Why don't I just lay it on the sticky paper? Okay, and just, just poke it down on there. Yeah, it'll stay there. Okay, um, not all is lost. Now there's something that I should mention here. I'm sure that, uh, Anyone who uses common sense will be able to figure that out, but when you're sliding your photo etch piece back into the envelope, you will have to watch that something isn't sort of curling up a little bit and catches on the on the edge of the plastic. 
I bent something when we were doing the Titanic, I can't remember what. Uh, I don't think we lost the piece, but I remember we did bend it. Okay, I think that's about it for today. Okay, we got Andy's photo itch bender here. And in tomorrow's episode, we'll uh, try and bend these. I don't think we'll try, I think we will. Thanks for watching. All being well, we'll see you tomorrow.